Well, I'm Jackie Pearce, and I'm a senior ceramic specialist with MOLA, Museum of London Archaeology. And MOLA is one of the chief archaeological organisations that um, deals with archaeology in London. And we also have a much wider remit than London, but London is where we're based, principally. And we have a very large number of staff who tackle archaeology from prehistoric right the way through to the 20th century. My own specialism is in the medieval and post-medieval periods, and I deal with pottery, with glass, with clay tobacco pipes, and wider groups of finds generally. But ceramics is my chief interest and my earliest interest. Now, one of the um, most important projects that I've ever been involved with is characterising and dating London's medieval pottery. We published a large um, type series of pottery from London, medieval pottery from London. Now this was, we're in a unique position here in that we were able to bring together the pottery that was excavated by MOLA and organisations that eventually became MOLA and the collections of the Museum of London particularly those which you can see in here, which is the Museum of London Archaeological Archive. And some of the pots we've got out on the table here are in this collection. Now these were collected in the late 19th century, in the early 20th century, largely from building sites. So they don't have archaeological context, but in the archaeological unit that preceded MOLA, we were digging up huge quantities of sherds. Nothing like as complete as the pots that you see on the table here, but huge quantities of sherds. But by marrying together the evidence from um, excavated contexts, which had a good date to them, with the material that was much more complete in the museum's collection, we were able to construct a type series of pottery for London, which is very, very closely dated. Now, I've got some examples out on the table here which take you through from the late 11th century, this pot and this pot. These are early medieval hand-built wares, coil-built pots, and we are able to date these to the second half of the 11th century and into the beginning of the 12th. And here we've got some of the first pottery that was made using a potter's wheel after the Roman period in London. This is made in the local London industry called London Typeware. We're very imaginative with these sorts of names. Um, and these beautiful, great big jugs are made on a potter's wheel and they use glaze, which enables the potters to produce some highly decorated um, vessels which are suitable for the table. You bring these out and you serve your wine from vessels like this and it looks much more flashy than something like this, which is hand-built and has no glaze and no decoration such as you can see on this one here. This particular pot, this dates to the second half of the 12th century, both of these two here. Now if we move down to this part, you can see this particular beauty here with the, these lovely applied roses. They use different coloured clay, different colour slip, which is very fine liquid clay, all sorts of different techniques on this pot here to make it really decorative vessel. Now this is made in a different type of pottery industry from those over there, from those London ones. This is made in Kingston-on-Thames and it's in a fabric that we call a whiteware fabric. It looks different from, you can see, the colour of this is much paler, it's sort of like, it's a bit dirty now because it's hundreds of years old, but it's a, a, a sort of buff colour whereas these are made in a fabric which looks like a red-brown red colour. So you look at this pot here, and this is from around about the middle to the later part of the 13th century, and we are able to date this because we were able to tie up this excavated material with the museum's collection. Now, the reason we've got such good dating for this excavated material is that there was a series of excavations carried out by um, Mola's predecessors along the Thames waterfront where successive timber revetments were pushing the waterfront forward into the river 
and they were renewed approximately every 30, 40 years. And excavations that were carried out in the 1970s and 1980s uncovered these huge series of timber revetments. And in order to support them, loads of um, domestic rubbish was dumped. Huge great dumps of domestic rubbish were piled up behind these timber revetments to support them. So we were able to date these using dendrochronology so that we have a sequence which is dated about every 30 years or so, right the way through from the 11th century up to the 15th century. And that has really um, revolutionised our understanding of the pottery that was used in London. Um, this one here, this is in Kingston type ware, and you can see how decorated that is in the 13th century. This is another one in the London type ware industry. Just move this back so you can see it. There you are, you can see the red fabric as opposed to the white fabric. But these are both about the same date. And they're both made using similar sorts of techniques for decorations. This one here has a, an overall coating of white slip. And then they put a green glaze on the top. And the green glaze shows up beautifully over the white. Now, as we get through to the later part of the 13th century and into the 14th, everything gets a lot plainer. So this one here, again, is made in the local London industry. You can see it with a lovely sinuous shape. A vessel like this, it's very plain though, nothing at all like the decoration you can see on that one there. It's just got a, a white slip and a thin glaze. Vessels like this, you would bring wine to the table and then decant it into a smaller, more decorative vessel to serve it up. This one here, this tall one here, this is a rather spectacular thing. It's made in Essex, in Mill Green, and so is this little beastie here, this lovely little face pot you can see there. And these were made as copies of pottery that was produced in London as well. One of the interesting things about looking at pottery is the way in which potters are inspired by the wares made by potters in other industries, and so they take these into their own potteries and produce pots that look, you know, similar to something that's made somewhere else, but it carries their own stamp. So this one here, this is called Mill Greenware, and it's made in Essex in the late 13th, early 14th century. Again, this is one of those industries that we were able to identify and date very closely as a result of the work that marries together the archaeological material that was being excavated by Mola's predecessors and the work of the um, Museum of London in keeping this collection together, this huge collection. This must be one of the top collections in the country of medieval pottery. I would say the top, not one of the top. It's a very large collection and it does include a huge number of complete vessels that gives us a tremendous insight into London's medieval pottery. Now, this one here, I'll put this one out on the edge there, move this one in a little bit over here. This one here is the latest pot that we've got on the table. This is also made in a whiteware fabric. You can see, again, it's a bit grubby because it is hundreds of years old. But this would have looked a pale buff when it was new. And it's one of my favourite pots in the museum's collection. You can see the shape, it's a very simple shape, it's quite plain. And the decoration is just like putting red paint in a lovely, simple, swirly design around the body of the pot. You can see there that it's got a nice well-formed pouring lip, so this one would actually probably work very well as a jug. And um, this is made in Cheam, which is in Surrey, and it's another one of these industries that we were able to date quite closely. So we know that this pot was made in the second half of the 15th century, which is really rather good to be able to date material so closely. So this is, these are just a very, very few examples of some of the wares that I've had the, the privilege of studying in some detail in the length of time, quite a long time, since I've been studying medieval pottery and working for MOLA and uh, the organisations that were in existence before MOLA. Okay, so I first 
got interested in archaeology as a child. I decided I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was about nine years old, and this was all as a result of getting very interested in prehistory, having lots of little books, picture books about prehistoric life and about um, pre uh, dinosaurs and things like that. Then moved on to Romans and thought Romans were very interesting. And I was determined at school to become an archaeologist, and the teachers all tried to say, oh, no, why don't you go and be a librarian? And I said, no, I want to be an archaeologist. And um, following that, so I went to university college, and I studied, in fact, Anglo-Saxon archaeology back in the 1970s. And went straight from university to start working for what was then called the Department of Urban Archaeology. It was the archaeological arm of the Museum of London. And that later became MOLAS, which is now MOLA. So I've been in the same organisation for a very considerable length of time since I graduated from university. I started off looking at Roman pottery when I was in, uh, first in the DUA, as we called it, and then moved on to looking at medieval and later pottery in about 1979, and have been doing it ever since then. And it's not what I expected to do when I was at university. I was concentrating on Anglo-Saxon and Viking material when I was there, which I still have a great love for. But having been seduced by the pottery, that's where my love has, has really been transferred and is where it stayed subsequently. And having the, as I said, privilege of being able to work on the kinds of collections that the Museum of London holds and the kind of material that MOLA has been digging up has, has, has really confirmed this as, as my dream job, should we say.